Joining us for more on all of this is Mark Levin. He is the host of Life, Liberty, and Levin. Thank you for being here. They, the university presidents really showed why anti-Semitism has been allowed to flourish on campuses. It apparently is accepted by the leadership of these schools. You know, Dana, we got to look at this, to me, in a bigger context here. Who is it that is fighting full-throatedly and united against anti-Semitism in this country? Which political party? The Democrat Party is the home to every one of these movements. The Democrat Party owns the teachers' unions. The Democrat Party owns the colleges and universities. All these anti-Semites are either Democrats or going to vote for Democrats. We have an immigration policy where we are importing the culture, the hate, the belief systems of foreigners into this country. That's not what immigration is supposed to be about. You're supposed to have allegiance to our country and assimilate into our culture, not vice versa. And the media have been very ambiguous, confounded, and confusing about making distinctions between Hamas and the Palestinians. Hamas is Palestinian. Hamas was elected as a terrorist organization of terrorist Palestinians in Gaza. And I just want to make a point, if I may. Here's a report that nobody's talking about. Uh, the Arab World for Research and Development, hardly a, uh, a Jewish conspiracy, they did a survey of Palestinians in Gaza and in Judea and Samaria. And let me tell Americans what they found, why you see these groups out there. The results indicate that an overwhelming percentage of Palestinians support the October 7 massacre, 75 percent, reject coexistence with Israel, 85.9 percent, are committed to the restoration of historical Palestine as a final solution, 71 percent, and support the creation of a Palestinian state from the river to the sea, 74.7 percent. The Palestinian positive perception of terror organizations remains high despite their role in carrying out the massacre <laughs> and the disastrous results. Breaking down the response, one more. 76% believe that Hamas plays a somewhat to very positive role. 84% believe that Palestinian Islamic Jihad plays a somewhat to very positive role. 80% believe Fatah's terror wing, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, plays a somewhat to very positive role. And 88.6% believe the Hamas armed wing, Al-Qassam Brigades, plays a somewhat to very positive function. There's been an effort to create this fiction in the American media, particularly on CNN and MSNBC, and at the White House and in the Democrat Party, that there's some huge schism between what Hamas is doing, what Fatah is doing, what Islamic Jihad is doing, what the Muslim Brotherhood is doing, and all these organizations they're doing. And these people, these poor people, don't support it if they could only have their liberation. But they do support it. And you're seeing it in our streets, in the hypocritical media. They say, pro-Palestinian protest. They're carrying flags about the destruction of the Jews. Is it pro-Palestinian or pro-Hamas? They can't even get their propaganda straight. And one other thing, if I might. Joe Biden blew up the Middle East. And it really is about time we start to focus on this administration. Iran was going broke. They were on their back. The people were rising up. Hamas got no funding out of UNRWA at the UN, which is really another front group, because Donald Trump cut it off. The Palestinian Liberation Organization, founded by Arabat, the moderate Palestinians, their money was cut off by Donald Trump. We had five Arab-slash-Muslim countries reaching out to Israel through the United States for peace agreements. Saudi Arabia was next in line. Most of that has been blown up. And so when I watch Blinken get up there and lecture the Israelis about how to treat their enemy, I say to myself, you have blood on your hands, pal. What about you? What about your responsibility for lighting up the Middle East? You sit there, you're still funding Iran. You're still funding Hamas. You're still funding the PLO. And now you put your, fit, your, your foot on the throat of Israel and you ask, what about the civilians? So I ask Biden and Blinken, what about the civilians? You lit up the Middle East when you came into office. You reversed every single policy that was in place. Peace was breaking out. And look at the Democrat Party, Dana. Two votes now in a period of a week or so on whether or not they oppose anti-Semitism. Half of the Democrats yesterday voted against that resolution. Right. Because if you're anti-Zionism, they say, can you be anti-Semitic? All Zionism means is the Jews have a right to their home in Israel. That's all it means. The Democrat Party, the media, 
The Biden administration can't just sit back and pretend these things are happening in our colleges and universities in the Middle East. They have, in part, caused it. Here is and Ron DeSantis, that. Mark. Um, a reporter was asking him about comparing Islamophobia, which the administration's they've been pushing that now, uh, to anti-Semitism. Biden has responded to the unprecedented spike in anti-Semitic fervor around the world and even in this country. He's responded by saying that the real problem is Islamophobia. They are not the same things. That's just not what's happening. I don't think those are the same. Uh, uh, and I think that, you know, there's one vein of, of, of hate that is predominating over all others right now, and that is anti-Semitism. That, that soundbite ran 30 seconds. Give me your best 30 seconds, Mark, on how you compare the two. Here's my best 30 seconds, Bill. Here's a book by a professor, Hitler's American Friends, the Third Reich, all about universities, university students in the 30s and 40s pushing Nazi propaganda. Here's another one. The Third Reich in the Ivory Tower by Professor Norwood. Complicity and conflict on American campuses with the rise of the Third Reich. Here's a book buried by the New York Times. The Holocaust as it was taking place. Here's another one. <laughs> Beyond Belief, Deborah Lipstadt. Buried by the New York Times. And it's not just them. This has been buried now by using this Islamophobia tripe. Islamophobia does exist. It exists in the Middle East where Muslims are slaughtering Muslims, where Palestinians are slaughtering Palestinians. You do not have Palestinian or other Muslim or Arab kids in our universities a fearful, locking themselves in their dorm rooms, locking themselves in libraries, scared to death about what's going on. You don't have Jews 200, 300 at the time demanding the elimination of the Palestinians or anything else threatening Palestinians. This is a subterfuge. And I ask this question. Where is Chuck Schumer? They held a hearing in the House yesterday. Why won't they hold one in the Senate? He's Jewish. Where's Bernie Sanders talking out about this? He's attacking Israel. Where's Merrick Garland? He's Jewish. Do you see any urgency in this administration? And Dana Perino, you said something the other day that was so important. If these weren't Jews and it was another minority, you know damn well this would be treated quite differently. You have CNN, MSNBC, who completely ignored the live coverage of those four college students when Fox was covering it. Yeah, we were glad You're to have You're telling me that, yeah. And you have anti-Semitism in the streets, yeah. open, in the media, mm -hmm. in the Democrat Party. What the hell were those networks doing that was so important that they couldn't cover that for 20 minutes? No, we were watching minutes? it, and the, and the students, they were amazing, that. and we had them here. And actually, one of them joined us this morning That's as well. Hard. Very impressive young people. Mark Levin, thank you for being on our show. Nice to see you, Mark.